This is Bernard Ruchti and this is the second segment of my presentation of my new recording of two piano sonatas by Ludwig van Beethoven played according to Carl Czerny's metronome markings. In the first segment we have learned that we have metronome markings for all of Beethoven's works given either by Beethoven himself or by his famous pupil Carl Czerny. We have also learned that there is a mystery about those metronome markings as when we look at the fast movements, the allegros and the prestos, the metronome markings are all on the very high end of the tempo scale. In this segment I'm going to give you an example of such a mysterious metronome marking and I'm going to talk about some important background. A good example for a mysterious metronome marking is Beethoven's Hammerklavier Sonata Opus 106. Beethoven himself gave uh, metronome markings for that piece. For the first movement he says um, half note or minim equals 138. A side remark at this point since I presume that I'll have viewers who will be using both the British and US system for note values, I'm going to include both systems in my presentation. So half note for the US system and minimum for the British system. So the metronome marking for the first movement of Beethoven's Hammerklavier Sonata Opus 106 says half note or minimum equals 138. The number 138 indicates that we have 138 beats per minute and the metronome marking half note or minim equals 138 means that we have 138 half notes per minute if we read the metronome marking the way we read it today. Now, those of you who are familiar with metronome markings will already know that this metronome marking half note equals 138 is very fast. In fact, if we look at recordings made by accomplished pianists throughout the decades, we find that no one plays it at that speed. Most of the recordings are around 108 or 112 and none goes up to 138. There are even slower ones. Glenn Gould, for instance, plays the first movement at around, at, at, at around 88 half notes per minute. So it seems that everyone agrees on the fact that a speed, a tempo, of 138 half notes per minute is way too fast. So amazingly this metronome marking given by Beethoven himself seems to be inaccurate. Before I talk more about that I would like to share some important background. Carl Czerny has not only given metronome markings or written countless etudes for the piano, but he has also written about music, like books. In 1839 he published a piano school in which he talks about every aspect of piano playing. He gave that book even an opus number, it's opus 500, which probably is a sign um, for how important he considered his book to be. In this piano school he also talks about the Italian movement names and explains what an allegro is. Now here is a first big surprise for us today because we find that the idea that Czerny gives of an allegro is totally different from the idea of an allegro that we have today. For us, 
An allegro is first of all a fast movement. That's not necessarily the case for Carl Czerny. I'm going to read for you what Czerny says about the allegro. I have an original uh, German edition from 1839 of that book. I don't have an English edition, but uh, I'm quoting uh, from, the from the original English translation of that piano school that came out in London in 1842. Okay, so this is chapter 8, paragraph 3, in the third part of Czerny's piano school. He says, The character of a piece which is marked allegro may be very various. And then he gives 10 different categories of allegros. A. Tranquil, soft and coaxing. B. Thoughtful or enthusiastic. C. Sorrowful or harmoniously intricate. D. Majestic, grand and even sublime. E. Brilliant, yet without aiming at too much movement or rapidity. F. Light, cheerful and sportive. G. Hasty and resolute. H. Impassioned, excited or fantastic and capricious. I. Stormy, hasty, in a serious as well as in a sportive sense. In this case, we must generally reckon on brilliant effects. K. Extremely wild, excited and unbridled or furious. Now, what we find here is that obviously Czerny's idea of an allegro is totally different from our idea. For us today, an allegro is a fast movement. And when we see the movement name allegro, it basically means we play as fast as we can. That's not at all what Czerny is talking about here. In fact, only five out of ten categories are fast. The other ones are not fast at all. Czerny talks about tranquil, about thoughtful, about sorrowful, certainly no fast characters. An allegro can be fast, it can be stormy, hasty, wild, but not necessarily. So, we see that an allegro, as it is described by Czerny, is not at all about speed, first of all, but about character. Interestingly, Czerny himself points that out right after he gives us this list. There he says, The player must take great care that in practicing a piece he does not deceive himself as to its real character. For all the above enumerated peculiarities of style may be indicated by the term allegro. And although the composer generally determines more precisely the character of the piece by some additional epithet as moderato, vivace, maestoso, etc., yet this is not always the case and does not extend far enough for all the passages which it may contain. And then he adds, even to the presto, these same observations will apply. So, we have learned that all the, the fast movements or the movements that we today consider to be fast, the allegros, the prestos, are not about speed in the first place, but about character. How this now affects our understanding of metronome markings, that I'm going to talk about in the next segment.
Now, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified when there is any news. Thank you.